good afternoon everyone i am dr tushar nay a senior resident in the department of orthopedics and we welcome you all for the clinical combined rounds uh, we'll be presenting on how to think out of the box and uh, reconstruct the hip joint rather than replace it so we had this patient uh, he was a 29 year old male he sustained a road traffic accident he was riding pillion on his bike when it collided head on with a car uh, we have to understand that he works at a grocery store and he resides at a remote area in bihar he is still unmarried and he is expected to be married in the coming year uh, due to various uh, conditions which were related to covid 19 and the restrictions he was initially managed non operatively on a thomas splint and plasters at a nearby hosp uh, hospital and he was later discharged for the same 10 weeks later he was brought to aims new delhi by his brother in law who is a resident of delhi for further management uh, at the emergency department uh, we found this patient to be bedridden he was on a thomas splint support for his entire right lower limb he had a pop cast on the right upper limb and his hip was stiff it was painful it was shortened and it was an in internal rotation uh more interestingly he had a foot drop which was a post traumatic sciatic nerve damage uh, there was also tenderness on his left ankle uh, however he was hemodynamically stable this is picture uh these were the initial uh, radiographic assessments what we can see is that there is an isolated see uh there's a isolated lateral malleolar fracture here which is well aligned so is the proximal humerus fracture which is in the initial one uh, one third of the shaft this also there also seems to be good cortical contact here then we got the pelvic radiographs done and uh, what we can see here is that he is on his normal splint and there is a gross abnormality on the right side and there are two cardinal lines that we observe to look for any acetabular fracture uh, this is the normal side we can see this line here this is the ilio pectineal line this line if we follow superiorly this is the iliopectineal line both of them seem to be broken here this is the iliopectineal line this is the iliopectineal line which end abruptly and that's uh, broken here the obvious other abnormality is the medialization of the femoral head we can see it's broken into the quadrilateral plate and it is moved into the pelvis uh, we can also see two fragments here this fragment is the posterior wall fragment which has been displaced superiorly and this is the fragment of the posterior column which has been medialized here so usually when we suspect an acetabular fracture we go for jude views this is the regular jude view which is done in 45 degrees oblique position which helps us uh, look more clearly at this entire part here which is the anterior column and this part here which is the posterior wall we can clearly see here that there is a fragment which is chipped off this is the posterior wall fragment and in the iliac oblique view which helps us look more better at the posterior wall a posterior column I'm sorry this entire part is a posterior column we can see that there is a fracture here and there is a free floating segment here of the posterior column this is what uh, the obturator and iliac view show us we can also see that there is intermittent callus formation here the whitish color thing which shows that the fracture is quite old it was 10 weeks old when the patient presented to us we also need to assess the pelvic ring and uh, the two commonly done views are the inlet and the outlet views what we saw here was that the pubic symphysis is displaced and it is displaced almost uh, roughly around less than 2.5 cm which young and burgess have classified as an anterior posterior compression type injury which is type 1 which is less than 2.5 cm further we always require ct scan to look at what the injury was and how further we can plan any operative or uh, further management options to discuss this i call upon dr rajesh oh. good afternoon faculty members i will be taking uh, speaking about the radiological aspect of uh, acetabular fractures uh, coming to the basic brief anatomy of the acetabulum acetabulum it is a basic uh, it's a osseous curve formed with the junction of ilium the ischium and the pubis Uh, laterally, it is formed by the uh, anterior wall. This is the posterior wall, and medial surface we have the quadrilateral plate. Uh, this one is the ilium. This one is the ischium, and this is the pubis part. This is the anterior wall, and this is the posterior. Coming to the part of anterior column, basically we have two columns: anterior and the posterior column. 
the anterior column is formed by the anterior two thirds of the iliac bone the anterior superior uh, iliac spine and the anterior inferior spine and the anterior wall and the superior pubic ramus coming to the posterior column this is the anterior column coming to the posterior column parts uh, we have the uh, greater sciatic notch the posterior wall the lesser sciatic notch and the ischial tuberosity and next one we have the sciatic buttress This is the sciatic buttress. This is the confluence of the anterior and posterior columns, which connects to the axial skeleton through the sacroiliac joint. Uh, this is the same thing. This is the anterior wall, and this is the posterior. And coming to the imaging modalities, previously radiographs were the mainstay of the modality, but in the present scenario, we have the MDCT, which is the modality of choice, as it can better detect the interarticular fracture fragments, the displacement, the impaction, and it also detect the soft tissue complications. And another advantage is the use of multiplanar reformatting images, which we can see images in the axial, the sag, sagittal, and the coronal images. And based on the type of fracture line and distribution of uh, involvement of the anterior or the posterior column, you have basically uh, this one is the both associated both column fracture. This is the T-type uh, stubular fracture, and this is the transverse fracture. Coming to the index case, uh, this was the axial uh, bone mineral algorithm image. We can see fracture of the right stapler with combination of the posterior column and the quadrilateral plate, and we can also see the intraarticular fracture fragments with impaction of the right femoral plate. Uh, this was the image obtained just superior to the level of a fracture. As the patient presented, uh, presented late, we can also see the callus formation at the level of fracture. Uh, this was the coronal reformatted image. We can see the combination of the posterior column and some intraarticular fragments, as well as the impaction of the right femoral plate. Uh, this is the VRT, the volume rendered technique image, which basically gives the overview on the type of uh, morphology of the fracture pattern. Here we can see the combination of the posterior column, which is better appreciated in this. This is seen from the posterior aspect. Here we can see the combination of the posterior wall and the posterior column. Uh, and to describe the uh, stubular fracture morphology, the best view is the end phase view, seen from the lateral aspect of the pelvis. Here we can see the fracture line traversing anterior to the posterior knowing both the anterior and posterior walls with combination of the posterior column. So basically it is a transverse type of fracture of the astabular. The same uh, fracture seen from the medial aspect of the pelvis with combination of the posterior wall as well as the posterior column. And these are the selected VRT waves of the right femoral head. This is seen from the posterior aspect. We can see the impaction of the right femoral head with defect along its posterior articular surface. And this is from the anterior aspect. We can see the intact anterior surface. Uh, to summarize the findings, uh, we have a combined pelvis acetabular injury as suggested. There was a widening of the pubic symphysis, uh, giving rise to anterior posterior compression type 1. And we have the transverse structure of the acetabular with segmental posterior column and the combinated posterior wall and the femoral impaction with intraarticular fragments. That's the part will be continued by Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rajesh. Uh, so, uh, we come to the radiology part now. We'll be dealing with the case scenario more in detail and how to manage them, what challenges uh, will we encounter and how to salvage the joint. Uh, to deal with the management part, I'd request uh, Dr. Heyman sir to continue the discussion. Thank you, Tushar. Uh, so, uh, after this is discussing the clinical history and the radiological findings, we have a case scenario of this patient who is having 10 weeks old, uh, relatively well aligned proximal third uh, shaft humerus fracture with left side isolated lateral nervous fracture. Usually these fractures, which is already 10 weeks old, we manage them conservatively and uh, we didn't offer any operation in this patient. The main uh, scenario we have now left with us is the 10 week old neglected combined pelvic acetabulum injury with dislocated hip and associated post traumatic shear nerve injury. So, what are the challenges we have right now for this patient who is young, active, having 10 week old, neglected posterior hip dislocation with unfortunate post traumatic shattering of palsy with very complex acetabulum fracture? As we discussed, the posterior column was shattered, segmental, and there were multiple interarticular fragments. And the weight bearing part of the femur head, which is the main, uh, what we call the main. Uh, uh, weight wearing dome of the femur head which articulates with the acetabulum and that transmits the lower limb forces to the axial skeleton which is being compromised here in this patient. 
So, what are the treatment options when he came to us considering AIMS as a premier institute? He was hoping something to be done for him in better way. And we have the options considering young age, giving this option as a conservative management where we apply a heavy traction for a long period already, it was past 10 weeks. We didn't think this will work for this patient. Another option which is not routinely been done but was done in 90s where the hip salvage was done just to moving the head and neck part of the femur and uh, mobilizing the patients. The patients have the relatively pain-free hip joint but with instability. So these two options were ruled out and we were not thinking of these two options in this patient. So what we have and what we are doing routinely in our department is in such patients where we, they present us in a neglected way, uh, we augment the establer defects and do the primary totally pathoplasty that is being done by Professor Malutra sir for a long time and with definitely good outcomes. So if you go through the literature what we have so far over the management of the neglected establer fractures, uh, there is a consensus like conservative treatment is drastic and it is not given to any of the patients in the present era. Definitely osteosynthesis, salvaging the hip joint in these patients is very challenging. We have to consider a lot of factors related to the patient anatomy and the duration of the surgery. And THR, though look simple in uh, native hips, but in complex neglected escalar fractures is very tricky. And it needs, it involves a lot of inventory of the implants, expertise, many of the bone substitute and always the results are inferior if you compare it to the normal THR which we are doing in the geriatric age group or the younger age group for some sort of osteoarthritis. There is one, one article which shows, uh, compares what should be done in neglected estabular fractures, should we do uh, in young patients, should we fix them primarily or replace them. In a series of six patients, they did only open reduction and internal fiction in one patient that too had simple posterior wall fracture that was neglected. Rest other patients, they have done immediate or later on total lip arthroplasty. So that what we discussed like total lip arthroplasty in younger age group is an option but it is not a long term option. They have to undergo number of surgeries for the failure or for the loosening of the implants. So in neglected estabular fractures, especially in the young patients, when possible, open reduction and internal fixation that we call osteosynthesis should be attempted to restore the anatomical landmarks or the pillars of the estabulum that may facilitate or definitely it facilitates future total hip arthroplasty in these patients. Obviously, the picture changes when we have the elderly patients where we consider the early mobilization for the patient and we give the total hip arthroplasty as a first option rather than going for the osteosynthesis as the bones are very fragile and fixation is very difficult in these patients. So this is the article uh, published long back in 2013 from our department where we are using certain out of box or very uh, rarely available octopus system cage where we are using them to reconstruct the estabular defects and doing the primary total hip arthroplasty and they have relatively good follow up and outcomes. Similarly, we are having different uh, work Schneider case depending upon the fracture pattern and the bone quality we are using multiple patterns of the cases to reconstruct the estabular defect and to replace the femur head. But however, in young patients, in these surgeries, the native hip is sacrificed and considering the young age like 30s or 40s years, they definitely will need a revision surgery in future due to the implant loosening or wear of implants. So in our case scenario, these options were not, uh, we, we didn't consider them as a first option for this patient. So do we have the thought, do we have anything alternative for this patient being considering his age, 29 year old, only the bread earner of the family. So do we have any other option? The option were similar to uh, what we do in orthoplasty, but here instead of uh, removing the femur head, we salvage the femur head and we reconstructed the estabular defect. Though it was difficulty, difficult but not impossible. So there were many concerns before we of further surgery for this patient. The femur head was damaged and uh, the risk of subsequent AVN was always there. Usually whenever we have an infection in the femur head, they land up with the avascular necrosis or the femur head collapse in the uh, early follow. -up. But considering as we discussed, preserving the native hip as long as possible, that was our aim. And if it fails, we can offer him the subsequent total hip arthroplasty that would have definitely be easier 
and long lasting then the index is very uh, totally pathoplastic and we have a uh, difficulty in mobilizing the in the fragments considering the callus formation and the fibrosis and the 10 week duration and normally when we have a transverse fracture we try to fix the posterior or anterior column and indirectly we reduce the another one but this was the 10 week old so the indirect reduction of uh, other column without opening the fracture is very difficult so in this case we were planning to execute extensive approach for the exposure adequate exposure the another point we we have to notice was the there was many acetabular fragments in the intraarticular part of the joint and there was a huge posterior wall in the column defect so in the preoperative radiological scans we anticipated this that it won't be very easy and we may need some bone graft substitute a bone graft uh, to uh, open the defect which we which may and which we may encounter during the surgery and definitely the associated sciatic nerve injury with foot drop will definitely impair the functional outcome of the patient despite we giving him the salvage or good femur head and the joint so for that we prognosticated the patient that he may not recover with his sciatic nerve palsy or he may need certain further surgeries like tendon transfers for the foot drop so considering all this we counseled the patient he gave consent for the surgery also give give consent for the bone grafting the adequate blood products were arranged the stabulum inventory for the osteosynthesis was arranged and backup hip replacement implants were also kept for this patient so this was one diagrammatic presentation how we deal with this patient if you look at this stabulum that is the side view of the stabulum where we can see this part of the stabulum is the two stabulum the part of the stabulum where the head lies is the pseudo stabulum which is the cavity formed by the displaced posterior column and the posterior so this was the challenge to bring this femur head which was relatively uh, safe and like not much impacted to bring it back to the true estabulum for this patient so we were planning to bring it back the moment we bring it back we will have a huge defect that need to be addressed and this defect which will be ha- will be having after relocating the femur head would be difficult and will definitely need some sort of graft substitution of graft to augment that part and later on to fix it so that this was the preoperative planning we usually do in our patients with a, a complex acetabular fractures to relatively have an idea how to deal with intraoperatively so this was the patient where the patient was operated in uh, regional anesthesia and uh, uh, commonly we use the cocal legger wedge approach where we curve the incision posteriorly towards the psis but in this patient considering the long duration of the fracture and need for the extensive surgery we opted for vertical incision which gave us the added advantage of of doing a uh, diagnostic osteotomy of the greater to canter which help us to mobilize the femur head adequately and to relocate into the true acetabulum also we uh, relieved the insertion of the uh, gluteus maximus to make the as much as possible free the femur head from the attachment and to bring it back to its position so after the femur head was brought to its position we have a huge defect this was the diagnostic osteotomy we did intraoperatively and this is the defect we encountered so this is the effect defect which was the basically the false estabulum uh, com- uh, formed by the defect of the posterior column and the posterior wall and this was around 5 into 4 into 4 cm defect normally when we have a defect in routinely in our surgery, uh, surgeries when we have the posterior column fracture as related posterior sorry wall fracture the where the defect is not much uh, big and it involves just the posterior wall we routinely routinely uh, reconstruct those defects by harvesting the ipsilateral autologous iliac crest graft and replace it over the posterior wall and that does definitely good to the patient it reconstruct the acetabulum and gives the posterior support to the acetabulum and prevents the posterior dislocation of hip but in this case scenario as the defect was big uh, around 5 cm defect we couldn't harvest this graft because it would have not suffice to the uh, area we needed for this patient so luckily unfortunately uh, under the leadership of professor malhotra sir we have a bone bank where we harvest the allograft 
in our department both in main aims and in trauma center we have the bone bank where we harvest the femur head which we are routinely getting in the replacement surgeries and also from the donations so we are harvesting those bone grafts in the bone bank and we are frequently using in tumor surgeries and uh, revision surgeries of the hip arthroplasty and knee arthroplasty these allografts so we have the opportunity to use this facility available with this uh, available with us for this patient care and this how we harvested the desired uh, segment of the bone graft substitute we needed to reconstruct the defect in this patient and and we measured two fragments we took to reconstruct, uh, reconstruct the posterior wall and posterior column defect in this patient and this picture shows how we use the allograft to fill up the defect and put a plate over it to reconstruct now we can't see any part of the hip joint seen the hip is pushed back uh, the femur head is pushed back into the to acetabulum and the entire defect has been filled up with the allograft and has been stabilized and fixed with the implant so these were the pictures in the intraoperatively we used the fluoroscopic examination to reconstruct the posterior column and the wall though the patient is having some defect in the femoral head but it was partial anterior superior part the posterior uh, superior and posterior part of the femur head was intact and patient had relatively congruous hip joint post operatively so these were the immediate post operative x rays where the hip joint was at almost at the same level to the opposite side hip joint the hip joint was uh, hip femur head and the acetabulum was congruous there was no medialization of the femur head and relatively happy surgery we did for this patient so in this patient for the osteosynthesis and for the salvage of native hip joint the extensive like approach with trochanteric flip osteotomy and the use of allograft worked in this patient however our fingers were crossed because we have used the allografts and did surgery in such a neglected patient where the chances of failure are very high so this was the 6 months follow up of this patient the allograft wasn't resolving and you know, the hip joint congress uh, was maintained the femur head is still viable there is no collapse in the femur head and this patient was happily walking without any support at 6 month follow up though he is having some lurch due to the old neglected trauma and we did the digastric osteotomy he might have some lurch due to that and this is the one year follow up he came luckily today and we took the x rays still the femur head is viable the hip joint is congruous the acetabulum is maintained the fixation is maintained there is no allograft resection the allograft has started in co incorporating with the post bones and this is the picture we have and this is that one year follow up he is able to do his routine activities this was what we are aiming for at least to give this poor guy to do his routine activities without any assistant and without any help and he is walking he is standing stairs without any support using both limbs together so now i would like to uh, call dr professor vijay sharma sir who did his, this surgery to give his share his opinion thank you good afternoon i think this was one of the most challenging cases uh, which came to opd if we look at uh, all the factors like femoral head defect associated with posterior wall shattered posterior wall it itself becomes uh, you know it uh, uh, indication for a arthroplastic procedure it's very difficult to salvage such patients now coming on to delayed presentation sir told because of covid obviously patients presented late but uh, we get lot of delayed uh, presentations and looking at shattered wall we do lot of reconstruction uh, construction of shattered wall with the uh, autograft but this time the defect was so big we had no option rather than using the allograft and fortunately we were successful and the best part was sciatic nerve it totally recovered in 6 uh, to 8 weeks time and we routinely give into into cap 75 mg for 3 weeks so there was no atrotrophic ossification this patient we were like quite cautious so around uh, we, he was on toe touch and the non weight bearing for uh, initial 3 months so there was no further femoral head collapse or evn there was no fixation failure we have not we, we cannot say it has osteo integrated but it has not uh, failed and there was no fixation failure so we are hoping that uh, there is osteo integration 
and stable hip joint we can see the uh, uh, functional result also good functional result so to take home with messages referral system system should be good good the problem with the our institution small hospitals they admit the patient they try to do the acetabular surgeries and after few days they keep the patient and then they say okay we'll refer the patient to institution and then results become very bad like we learned surgery from letterne jude and uh, even in their series after two weeks results were less than 30, 40% good results they could achieve if the patient comes after two weeks so i think early referral system should be there for such injuries and uh, we had very good pre op planning system with the radiology and uh, other people and patient compliance was very good fortunately uh, in this patient so in neglected acetabular fractures osteosynthesis and salvage uh, would defer immediate uh, need for replacement surgeries with favorable outcomes uh, and allograft availability was like i think this was one of the most important factor i would say per operatively we decided that uh, pre operatively we had idea we'll go for allograft but still most of the uh, surgeries we could uh, do with autograft but in this case allograft was needed and fortunately we could get a very good allograft and uh, the allograft survived thank you Any question? When you saw that you know anywhere in the world, this could definitely be seen for the country. But to have successfully done this, not just a successful advance, but they had the national industry. It is just a whole thing. Similarly, this agreement is down the line of two years ago. It would be very easy for anybody to go in and put in a compared to an acute setting where such a neglected patient may be found. And you try to reconstruct, and it's a very challenging thing which can be done to get very quickly. So, try to put these things together, and it will give you the part. And you see, maybe you have given this background, you saw it all through and all. It's not a great ideal patient for a joint disease. So, it's more of a package of it. So, if he continues to suffer with pain and can't do this, but he's got a reasonable function, which is actually a surprise. You saw the publication. Uh, we had from the department by right, using that. So I think that is something which is really uh, a very innovative thing that uh, from the uh, from our orthopedic. Uh, Do you have any questions? We may have to answer. Okay. 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 Most of the exam. Actually, only one plate was used with the uh, eight screws, so it is. Uh, These are very cheap. Very cheap. Very cheap. Uh, so you know, for articular pressure, the plates which are used are Indian plates, and they are the cheapest one. The reason being that the imported ones are available, but they are more difficult to move than one. So the you know when you have two different shaped fragments, you put them together, you can shape any Indian plate on top of it. Most of the time, the car center we use Indian plates, which are very And second thing is in trauma center, many patients are unattended or poor, and the implants are anyway given free of cost. ECL patient or unattended patient or ECL patient, there was a system for ECL to spend and then get reimbursement, which has been discontinued. So anybody who doesn't have money on it doesn't have to pay for the surgery because it's not done. You know the patients who don't have a BCL car, you see teaching faculty says that this person cannot afford or doesn't have a the money, the implants are given to you. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you.